Welcome back, people. Tomorrow night, watch Bobby Rivers with the man who made the Buddy Holly story a big hit. Actor Gary Busey will talk about his roughest music gigs. We'll also have rare footage of Jim Morrison, the late, great Jim Morrison of The Doors. So that's tomorrow night. Now, last night, Kenny Loggins was in here talking about sitting behind my guest tonight during an Oscar <laughs> telecast while they both watched their songs lose that coveted uh, uh, Academy Award. Uh, tonight, Phil Collins is my guest. How are you? You still holding up there <laughs> pretty well? You just keep pulling things out of the bag. Well, there. <laughs> well, 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 you know, do a little homework. That was, but last night, Kenny was so funny telling that, that story. <clears throat> I know. Uh, but, and, and you know, I remember watching the telecast that year, and I was, I was pulling for your song. And I was watching Anne Ryan King. You didn't King. tell Kenny Loggins. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. And I was watching Anne Ryan King perform it, and I thought she was putting extra words into, into the number. Mm. Yeah. Well, she could have taken them all out, as far as I'm concerned. It, it, it was a shame. It, actually, the whole thing got blew out, blown out of proportion. I, I, w I asked if I could sing the song, because I was actually going to be there. I, yeah. mean, I only get one crack at the whip with an Oscar nomination. So I, I thought, I'll be there. And I, as I'm going to be there, why not perform it? The guy that wrote it and sang it, I'm going to be there. Anyway, they said, no, that's OK, we don't need you. We've got Anne Ranking doing it. So I said, OK, yeah. Anyway, then the record company picked up on it. And then there was a big kerfuffle with Gregory Peck and Larry Gelbart against the record company saying it's not music promotion, it's a film industry thing, which is quite true. But um, when I got there, all the ushers that were seating people said, Phil, nothing to do with us. <laughs> you know, nothing to do with us. Oh. And after at the end of it, I was sitting there thinking, what have they done to my song, you know? Uh. Because it was, I mean, she might be a great dancer, but it just wasn't very good. And um, I sat there, and, uh, and people in the break come out to me and sort of pat me on the shoulder. Sorry about that, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, the ushers were saying, nothing to do with us, boy, nothing to do with us. I think a lot of people in our audience felt like saying that yeah, to you. It was, it was, you know, water under the bridge. I mean, I came in for a lot of flack afterwards from Gail Bart saying I was a bad loser. I mean, I, I didn't, I was happy to be there. I was one mm. of four nominations. I mean, I know that, of course, it's nice to win, but it's nice to, it's, you know, just being there was great. Yeah. But um, it just, there was so much kerfuffle about it that it seemed to sort of look like I was a bit of a sore, sore loser, which wasn't really the case. Actually. Now, here you've got an Oscar nomination for, for Best Song, and uh, uh, now you're eligible to, to be nominated for Best Actor for your performance in Buster. And you're playing a real-life character. Uh, Buster was involved in a train robbery, took mm -hmm. a lot of money in the mid-60s. This That's was right. in, in Great Britain. It was a crook. It was a big, big event in, the, in England. I, I mean, remember it, reading it about didn't. that one. In fact, I saw a film the other day, um, which actually, on the radio, it mentions it today in England, 1963, mm. uh, and I forgot what film it was, but it was um, something like Flamingo Kid, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, so it actually did reach here, but it was a huge thing in, in, in England. And it was one of the major events of the 60s, along with Kennedy, along with um, uh, the Profimo Beatles. scandal yeah, and, the and the Beatles. Yeah. And in, in, your, uh, in Buster, Bust, the film really focuses on his marriage. Yeah. The pull off the heist, Buster, his wife and child moved to Mexico. Right, on the but run, basically. On the run. It's a little a family band on the run, but they're not really free. No. I mean, Buster and Bruce Reynolds, the two main men behind the robbery, really, they were both on the run. Uh, they captured everybody else. And the longer these guys stayed on, on, on free, yeah. the, the more the public got behind them. Because really, they thought, well, good luck. The other guys have got 30 years in jail for just robbing a train, yeah. which was extraordinary sentences. And so the public were behind them. And... Um, they went to Mexico, and of course, June and Buster had never been outside London, let alone England, because in those days, in 63, people didn't travel, 65 didn't mm. travel. You know, the rich people went to uh, rent abroad, but the poor people just went to the coast. To yeah. put, you know, you know they, put, they went paddling in the ocean. But, um, so they were suddenly thrust in a place like Mexico with foreign language, foreign food. People didn't eat garlic in England, you know. Yeah. Suddenly you had spicy food, and they just didn't fit in, and June hated it, and she came back. Well, here, we've got a clip on how they didn't fit in. That's right. Here, Julie Walters, Phil Collins, in a scene from Buster. Oh, Jesus Christ. All these people are also ill. You must wait. Wait? How can we wait? Feel her. She's wet through. She could be dead before you get to her. <laughs> listen to her. Just listen to her. 
You are not in England now. You must wait your turn. Buster, for God's sake. Give me a key and get out of here. Just go away. Don't be stupid, Jane. We're not being stupid, Buster. We should never have brought you to this godforsaken place. Funny enough, I've been a real in this filthy hole without you upsetting the doctor as well. Oh, my, that'd have been all my bloody fault. Who did I do it for if it wasn't for you two, eh? And you were the one that was always on about having a house and a good life and all that. Not here, Buster. Can't you see? Ain't worth a tin of beans here. What the hell am I supposed to do about it, then? Go back to the villa, Buster. There ain't nothing you can do for us here. Look, she's my daughter, is she? Well, I ain't leaving. I've done it all for you, you know, you ungrateful cow. Bill Collins, very good as Buster. Now, you invited the Prince and Princess of Wales to see Buster, didn't you? Yeah. Have they seen it? No. Um, I invited because I'm involved with the Prince's Trust as a trustee, mm -hmm. uh, which is his charity. And uh, I invited them, yes, because uh, I thought it's a, it's a warm love story, in fact. It doesn't glorify crime, but right. the critics in England, without having seen the film, decided that it was going to be a film that glorified crime. Before having seen it? Before having seen it. And therefore, when it was officially announced as an engagement by the royal couple, they to protest at it, you know, and, and it, the thing snowballed to the point where it was so embarrassing that oh, about six weeks later I had to write to the prince and say, maybe it's best you don't come. So they mm. didn't come. I mean, I've, you know, I've spoken to him a few times since and he wants to see it, but I mean, you know, it's just a question of getting him a print. You, you know the real life Buster, don't you? Yeah. Has he been to your home? Yes. Do you count your silver when he leaves? <laughs> No, that's unkind. You know, he's done his time, Buster. He he's fl sells flowers outside Waterloo Station now. He's done that for 12, 13 years. He's got a straight job. Yeah. And um, he's a lovely man, actually. He's a lovely. He's, he's like I play him in the film. I play him as a, as a lovable rogue because that's what he is. People yeah. think that it's like glorifying him, you know, and romanticizing it. He's a very nice man. He's not a dark criminal. Uh, mm. uh, now, because your, your performance is so natural and, and so good, have you received other script offers? Yeah, I've had some. Uh, nothing which really motivates me too much at the moment. I mean, yeah. the next thing for me is a solo album, which I'm starting in February. All right. So that will be music will be next. But I'm still looking for something, and I am keeping looking. I'm, me I'm meeting directors and, and writers all the time. Good. Yeah. I'd like oh, to see you in I'm, some more film projects. I definitely want to do more. All right, definitely. let's talk some more about uh, uh, your music and your goodwill duties, of which uh, we love you for. We're going to come back with fabulous Phil Collins. Please stay with us. Wouldn't you agree? drummer and a snappy dresser. <laughs> Give me just one more night of Phil Collins' tune that is great to play on a romantic encounter. And when you're on such an encounter, in his own way, Phil could help you dress for the occasion. I was in London a year ago this month, mm -hmm. and because of you, I purchased these. <laughs> <laughs> so how has it been? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was watching them, folks. There, there is a series of very funny condom commercials uh, in Great Britain for this product <laughs> called Mates, and in one of them, you hear the voice of, of Phil Collins. Yeah. Now, how, how did that start? Well, come Richard about? Branson, uh, who runs Virgin Records, Virgin Airlines, Virgin Everything, he um, sells condoms. Yes. Yeah. He basically is. I mean, we we knew him when he was. Was a budding businessman, which has owned a record company, really, owned a few record shops. And then uh, he's since become one of Britain's most successful businessmen. He got behind the, um, an AIDS campaign yeah. and started to promote these mates. And, and because I'm on Virgin, I guess, you know, One More Night... See, it's quite interesting. One More Night is a romantic song. The other side of it is there's just been a survey in England yeah. um, of the, most, the, ten most song, the ten songs most likely to cause sex between youngsters and in the air tonight was number one which huh. is quite extraordinary because they had this poll of songs that were safe to play at parties where which wouldn't <laughs> induce yeah. couples to self you know and then um but in the air was one that they they started recommending people didn't play because it actually it actually um <laughs> yeah yes yeah which is extraordinary you that, did you expect that when you were putting that song together? Not at all, no. Nah. Maybe it's because wasn't that used in risky business for yeah, the uh, yeah. well maybe oh, that's right yeah, yeah well that was it mm. So you're, you're helping to fight some risky business there with that. And, and yes. the, yeah, and then here you, you did the, the Bicontinental performance yeah, well, in, in yeah. Live Aid. Now, now your voice is heard in, 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 in beer commercials, or your, your song is heard in beer, in beer commercials. Yeah, well, Michelob actually, um, they, should I have said Michelob? Sorry. It's, a, it's fine. Uh, no, but they, they actually sponsored my tour. Uh, because that, that underwriting a tour helps cut so the cost. So that's it. And first, you know, the, you, Winwood, and Clapton, yeah. 
have music that's been used in beer commercials. And you know, we all think, well, you know, our pop rock music is is so. You know, we always we grew up with it being anti-establishment and non-corporate, and then to hear it in commercials, it's like that's right. But I think really in the '60s, as you know, like things like the, the beat was influenced advertising, influenced so many different ways, forms of you know ways of life, and now music is part of it. And it's like I mean, because of my involvement with Prince of Wales, for instance, yeah, um, it's like I appear to have sold out because I'm going over there. In mm. fact, what I think has happened is that they have loosened up and they're coming over here. You know, and I think, uh, you know, I don't see it as establishment. I mean, um, just using a song in a commercial. I mean, I, I don't believe in endorsing particularly any, any one particular There's product. There's one thing about, uh, I, I saw a, a, a beer poster that kind of, well, it really rubbed me the wrong way. It was for, for Winwood. Now, you saw Steve Winwood's name was about this big, but the beer product was that big, yeah. and I thought, that depends how much you keep hold of it. I mean, yeah. Michelo did sponsor Genesis Tour, it did sponsor my tour. And as I say, it helped keep ticket prices down. And um, you just keep it within reason. Some people will sell their soul. I mean, not saying what Stevie did, because yeah. I mean, I don't, he's certainly not that kind of character. But some people will. Yeah. And some people have just sort of keep it in um, perspective. And we try and keep it in perspective. But. About, uh, about beer or cocktails, Robert Plant said, it's <laughs> he said it's tough to get you to uh, pick up the tab for a round. Thirty things you didn't know about Phil Collins coming out right now. <laughs> this is this is very unfair of Robert Plant to say. I was with Robert last night, in uh -huh. fact, and uh, he insists that I'm stingy. Now I've never I've never once seen him buy anybody a round of drinks. I mean, let's hear it. You hear it first on VH1. Um, no, it's very strange. Um, he said that. I, re I read that when he said that. I thought, well, you know, because he said it as a joke, in yeah. fact. But uh, people do believe what they read. <laughs> so will you buy me one after, your, uh, after the show? Looks like I have to now, doesn't it? Yeah, you will. But, no, you, you're gonna, <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> a bit short Yeah, myself. yeah, the old <laughs> I left my wallet, my other pants trick. Uh, you, when are you going into the studio again? February. February? Yeah. Any chance that maybe Aretha Franklin will do a cut with you? Well, you know, she's just about to do a special, and... Um, she was asked, apparently, I got a message, she was asked who she wanted on the special, and I was one of them, Ray Charles was the other. Are you going to do it? And I can't do it, oh, because no. I, I can't do it. But at least it means that we're close to working together, because I've always wanted to work with her. Yeah. Producing, I'm not singing to do it, I'd be in awe of that, because she's got yeah. wonderful voice, but I would like to, to, to produce her. And I think maybe we're not far away from that, maybe in the distant future. Good. Are, is there going to be anybody making a guest appearance on this album? Uh, I have no plans at the moment, but I'm going to be using lots of different people. You know, I mean, Sting, Sting sang on the last one. I mean, and that was a good, good combination of voices. So there'd be, there's always, because they're mates, you know, these people. So yeah. they end up turning up on uh, different things. Are you a workaholic? I enjoy work. Do vacations make you nervous? No, I like my vacations now. I didn't have vacations ever until about six years ago. Yeah. And then I actually had one, and my wife made me take one, and I actually did enjoy it. So now I go at least once a year. Away. I have July and August off with my kids, so that's a big force. That's good. You know, when you, when you go into uh, uh, show business, you have certain expectations. Did you get what you expected? I got more than I expected. Yeah. I never expected anything like this. All I wanted to do was just to play the drums and be respected by other musicians. Anything you're still hungry for in your career? Mm, there are always things. I mean, now the film world's opened up to me. I, I kind of I want to make more films. Yeah. Obviously, I'm always interested in writing better songs, singing them better, performing them better. But uh, films isn't it, is the next thing that I have yet to, to get behind properly. Well, we'll be looking forward to them. You're uh, one of the best in the business. Phil Collins, thank you very man. Much. You're one of my favorites. This has been an honor to sit here with you. Checks in the post, Bobby. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thanks for being with us. Tomorrow night, Gary Busey and rare footage of Jim Morrison of The Doors. Play safe, be kind, and thanks for the pleasure of your company. Bye bye.